here today with a couple of new pistols from the folks at Bond Arms. Bond Arms makes uh, what cannot be argued are the best Derringer pistols that have ever been made. They lock up tighter, they're made to greater tolerances, they can handle more power and ammunition than any Derringer pistols that have ever been. They have, my brother Jeff used to say, they're the freedom arms of Derringer pistols. That is not hyperbole, and it's not an overstatement. Uh, Bond makes their guns tight, they make them right, and they make them at a decent price. We've reviewed several Bond arms in the past. They've been friends of ours for years. We appreciate their stuff. Uh, Jeff owned a bunch of Bond arms pistols, and I owned a bunch of Bond arms pistols. When I'm running around the place here, that I've usually got one of those in my pocket. The Bond arms pistols are great protection against uh, things like snakes and uh, four-legged predators and even two-legged predators. You keep one in your car, somebody tries to uh, carjack you, you've got something for them. The Stinger is a brand new design from Bond Arms. It's been coming around for a while. They are made to be much smaller and much lighter in weight than the standard Bond Arms pistols. They are offered in a 9mm and they're also offered in 380 ACP. Like the more familiar Bond Arms pistol models, the Stinger is a two-shot break-open Derringer type pistol. It breaks open with this lever here on the side. Works very easily. Compared to the standard Bond Arms pistols, these things are as minuscule. You put them in your pocket and hardly even know it's there. One complaint that I've always heard about the Bond Arms pistols is that they are kind of heavy. And that is true. They are kind of heavy, which is both good and bad. It makes them a little bit harder to carry, but it also makes it easier to mitigate the recoil, especially when you're shooting something like a 410 shot shell. Being chambered for the 380 or the 9mm means that recoil is not an issue in these things, and these handle the recoil very well. The size of them, they're just way smaller than the regular Bond Arms pistols. The barrel is three inches in length, stainless steel, double shot, and but it's uh, thinner than the standard Bond Arms barrels. The frame is way thinner than the standard Bond Arms frame. Uh, the standard Bond Arms frame measures 0.963 inches, almost an inch thick. These are 0.55 inches, just barely over half an inch in in thickness. So it's about half the size in thickness as the regular bond. But the frame being made from aluminum alloy also saves you a lot of weight. The weight on these compared to another three inch standard Bond Arms pistol is just a little bit over half. The standard all stainless Bond Arms three inch pistol weighs 20 ounces. These weigh 12 and it's, it's really it's just a really nice, wonderful feel on these. The weight of them is just perfect for the smaller cartridge, like the 380 or the 9mm. They fit just fine in the hand. They have the standard grip shape, the small grip shape. These are made to conceal, so you don't want a big grip getting in your way. And besides, you don't need the extra grip hanging down to uh, handle the recoil of a 380 or 9mm. These fit two fingers very nicely. A third finger can curl underneath the butt of it and it works just great for that. The grips on these are rubber. There are some slimmer polymer grips available, but I really like the feel of the rubber on these. They uh, settle in your hand and they don't want to move around, which with a round grip frame like the Bond has, you need something that's going to adhere to your hand a little bit. The sights consist of a integral steel ramp in the front, like normal. In the rear, this, the frame actually com comprises the ears of your sight. There's a little flat milled into the top of the barrel lug there, or the hinge lug, and that makes your dished out portion of the rear sight. So the front sight nestles right into that very nicely. It's really a cool, simple, ingenious way of designing the sights on these. Where the Stinger achieves most of its weight loss, besides the slimmer barrel profile, is that the frame is made from 7075 aircraft grade aluminum with some stainless steel inserts here in the back it's so that it, uh, it's plenty strong everywhere it needs to be plenty strong. The trigger guard is integral to the frame, it's just not a separate part. The trigger is Bond's newly designed trigger and the trigger pull on these is the best I've ever felt on a Bond Arms pistol. Both the 380 and the 9mm came in at about 4 pounds, just under 4 pounds in weight. And that's really nice. For those of you who have been familiar with the Bond Arms pistols, the trigger pull has always been something of an issue on those. Um, but that's a necessary deal because of the geometry of the Derringer design. 
and the margin of safety that's required with it. A few years ago, Bond made some improvements to the trigger on their pistols, and that was a good step, but these have just the nicest triggers I've ever felt on a Bond. The hammer is a rebounding type hammer, and what that means is it rebounds off the firing pins which retract, so once it contacts the firing pin, the hammer rebounds a little bit and does not rest on the firing pin. It's held off the firing pin by the internal mechanism. So if you drop this gun or something, if even if there's a shell in the chamber, it's not gonna go off. The hammer's gonna keep that from happening. Also, this pistol has a cross bolt type safety. You push it in from the right to go to safe, and when you do that, the hammer falls on the block. To fire, you push it in from the other side, and the hammer falls as normally and rebounds into the safety position. It's a very safe design. Another design change built into the Stinger as opposed to the regular Bond Arms pistol is that there is no extractor built into the side of the barrel. Uh, normally on a Bond pistol you have an extractor that you can push your empties out just a little bit and, put, and pluck them out. These don't have that. What they have instead is they have a little milled slot in the side that allows you to hook the empties and pull them out of there or you can knock them out with a range rod or a lot of times they just fall out of there. This also serves as a loaded chamber indicator because you can look at the barrel from the port side to that little window and see if there's any cartridges in there or not. It works just fine and saves a little bit of bulk on the side of the pistol. A good all-around load for plinking and practicing with the 380 ACP is Stryker's 95 grain full metal jacket from the American Marksman. It's remanufactured stuff, it's good stuff, it's inexpensive stuff, it's consistent and it's soft shooting. A really great self-defense load for the 380 ACP that takes the 380 to a whole new level is Lehigh Defense's 75 grain controlled fracturing. It's a solid copper bullet that's scored and it's just, it's just a great performer. It comes out of there really fast, only going 75 grains. It's a great load. In the 9mm, CCI's Blazer Brass 115 grain full metal jacket is a good all-around practice and plinking load that's not going to break the bank. Double Tap's 124 grain bonded defense hollow point it's a great self-defense round. It's a plus P load. It's coming out of here about 1,200 feet per second out of this three inch barrel. It just really comes screaming out of there. It's a nice powerful load, but it's surprisingly easy to shoot in this little bitty bond. A great self-defense load from my friend Tim Sundles at Buffalo Bore Ammunition is their 147 grain subsonic low flash standard pressure jacketed hollow point. It's moving out about a thousand feet per second with a 147 grain bullet. It's got plenty of smack to it. The bullet is very well designed. It's just a dandy defense load. Bond arms pistols have always been very accurate. They've got to be because the barrels are fixed and the sights are fixed and everything. The geometry is all in one place. There's nothing there to move around. So they are accurate pistols. But uh, these things were really shot well. The 380, I was really impressed with the way the 380 shot at five yards, which is a good combat distance. It held two shots just right close together, uh, less than a half inch group on a playing card at five yards. That was great. The nine millimeter pistol did even better. The, with the nine millimeter, two shots went into the same hole at five yards on a playing card and went right to where I was aiming on it. It's really nice accuracy on these Bond pistols. 
before you ask, and I had to ask Gordon Bond this myself before I got the pistols, and after I got the pistols, I had to try it for myself, but the barrels of the standard Bond Arms pistols do not interchange with the Stingers. They do not. They're, the uh, configuration of the lug on top is completely different. The barrel width is different. Uh, it just won't work. It's not even close to being the same in size and the same configuration where the barrel lug is and all that. So these will not interchange with other Bond pistols. They will interchange with each other, the nine millimeter or the 380. Those barrels will interchange from Stinger to Stinger. But at least at this time, accessory barrels are not available. Hopefully in the future, they will be available separately so you can switch out the barrels on these as you want to. And hopefully they'll make some other calibers in the future like uh, rim fires or maybe 38 special or something like that. I think that would work wonderfully in the Stinger. But for now, you can buy the pistol in 9mm or in 380. MSRP on the Bond Arm Stinger pistols is $389. Availability on the Stingers at this time is somewhat limited because Bond is having trouble sourcing the 7075 aluminum used for the frames on these. Uh, they're having trouble keeping up with the early demand on them. But if you're patient, you just hang in there, you'll be able to get you one of these. They are a fine pistol. For carry options, there's not a whole lot available right there right now. The uh, Holsters offered by Bond Arms won't work for these because they're made for the standard Bond Arms and they're way too big to fit these things. Bond will probably be offering some holsters for these in the future, but as for right now, there's just not a lot out there. And uh, I really like to carry these in a pocket and I like to carry in a pocket holster. Um, I used to didn't do that, but my pal Rob Leahy at Simply Rugged Holsters in Arizona convinced me that's the way to go because you, when you're carrying a, a pistol for defense, you need to have the same presentation every time. Instead of having your pistol rolling and tumbling around in your pocket, you want something that's going to hold your pistol in the pocket in a consistent position so the handle is where you want it to be all the time. For that purpose, I just happened to see this pocket holster from Skin Tight Holsters laying around on my desk. I've reviewed this in the past. It's a neat little holster made for the small semi-auto pocket pistols. But I looked at that thing laying there and I thought that just might work. And sure enough, it works perfectly for the little Bond Arm Stinger. It's made out of a thin layer of Kydex with a rubber around it. The rubber serves two purposes. It creates spring tension on the clamshell of the holster. So when you poke your pistol down in there, it's retained by that and you don't have to worry about it falling out or anything like that but it also creates adhesion to your pocket just enough sticky in your pocket so that when you go to draw you're not drawing the holster as well it comes out of the holster just great so this skin tight pocket holster from the folks at ccw breakaways is just the thing for the bond arm stinger the bond arm stinger derringer pistol whether in nine millimeter or in 380 ACP is a fine option for protection carry. It's small, it's lightweight. You don't even know it's there as you're carrying it. My car keys weigh more than this thing does. And it's a great way to arm yourself with a couple of rounds of defensive ammo when a couple of rounds will do. So check them out at bondarms.com. Gordon Bond is a good friend of ours, has been for many years. He makes fine pistols at a decent price. They're just very well made. They're accurate. They're easy to use. They're simple. They're tough as a pine knot, and they're affordable. They're made in Texas by Texans. They're a great company. 